YouTube, welcome back to another Wednesday video, and we're gonna do a pro tips that we've never done before. You know, many times in the, in the course of our video, I've been bitten while I've been talking about different snakes and everything. We've kind of included that in their videos, just not made a big deal about it. We do want to sensationalize it because it's actually so rare. We deal with hundreds of interactions, honestly about a thousand interactions at least a week in this room. And I probably get bit well, once or twice over the course of a week. And so we kind of just gloss it over, don't think anything about it. But this video, we're gonna focus on it and talk about what it's like to get bit by a ball python, whether or not you should be worried about it, what you should do after, and the difference between a feeding bite and a defensive bite. Let's jump into it. I already have a little blood on my hands. We've already recorded some of this. Let's go look at how this works. All right, so here we are in the hatchling area. We're gonna find a really, really pretty looking snake and we're gonna see if we can get a bite. So the, we're gonna do the opposite of what I tell you guys to do. We're gonna stand over it like we're a big predator, okay? You can see already the snake is breathing really hard and we're just gonna kind of like come at it like, but you see how the anxiety is building with him as he moves his head out, his muscles are tensing, breathing really hard back here. This is the kind of thing which you wanna do, well watch my video about what to do, how to take him out of this mode. We're gonna go ahead and take a little bite, see what it's like. This is so un unlike me. I always try to avoid this. I get bit on accident. See, he really doesn't want to bite me. He just wants me to leave. Look at that. He really doesn't want to bite me. He gave me so many opportunities. Wow. You know, you don't even realize until you're trying to realize exactly how reluctant to bite they really are. This is an inchy asphalt desert ghost. We're going to see if we can get her upset at me here. He really doesn't want it. doesn't want it. We got a strike, guys, <laughs> finally. Oh, okay, so he got me right there in the, right in the flat of my hand. And we have one, I felt a couple of teeth, but only one really penetrated. We have one little spot. See how tiny that little tooth mark is? I think it's the side of the hand. Right there, that one really didn't penetrate. It got me a little bit, but I don't think, maybe one little tooth, tooth pin. It just shows you, again, they're not, it's not really nothing to be worried about. The worst the worst bites as far as how it feels is when they get you right in the tips of the fingers where you're real sensitive, but again, it doesn't really do any damage. I really didn't feel any of the, I mean, I felt it touch my hands, but I really didn't, don't feel any pain or anything about one tooth, two tooth, two teeth. Hit me up here, didn't, didn't pierce the skin at all. Um, that's an old bite from last week. You see, that one had like five teeth in me. But again, they really don't hurt. You can get just a tiny, tiny little drip of blood if you squeeze it. This is the insanely amazing fire orange dream leopard spot nose, yellow belly desert ghost. And she is so much brighter than she was the baby. And she really, she's like, you kidding me? I don't want to bite you. See, oh, got me a thumb. You never try this guys. This is all new territory for me, honestly. This is the whole trying to get bit thing. Okay, so that one got me in the thumb. Literally, I don't think it even left a mark. All right, we're gonna try one with a mohawk. They have extra attitude, right? So, all right, come on, man. Use the other hand. Nope, oh, see, he wants to leave just to scare me, and then he wants to shoot away, just like they would in the wild. They want to leave, they don't want to bite. There's nothing in it for them. There's nothing in it for them to bite you. They just really want you to leave. Okay, that was a little better one. It left a little saliva on me there. Okay. So we're gonna let it just kind of show up for a sec. We got one, two teeth maybe right there in that hand. One down here, top jaw, lower jaw, a little bit of saliva on me. One little tiny tooth mark right there. Again, this is not something to be all worked up and afraid of. It's mostly the startling effect. Like when I get bit, my heart just says, I, like, well, it jumps just a little bit. But there's no pain involved with it really. Come on. <laughs> So that one, I pulled away just as his teeth went in, and so it just pulled the snake a little bit with me. And we have a couple teeth in right there. And again, there's no real, just barely pierced the skin. You have a little bit. It's kind of like doing like a little hemogloma test or something. Tiny, tiny little spots. Again, nothing to be really concerned about. It's mostly in our own hearts, our own adrenaline, our own fear of being bit by an animal. It's a very natural fear that makes us really, really nervous about being bit by a snake. So all of these bites we've taken were all defensive bites. And there's a big difference between a defensive bite and a feeding bite. The difference is defensive bite is the snake is biting you 
does not want to stay attached to you. It wants to let go so that you can leave. The whole point of the biting is only to scare you away, to protect itself, not to stay with you, not to hold on to you. So the other kind of bite is a feeding bite. And so what leads to a feeding bite is the smell of rodents either on their hands or in the air, in the enclosure. When they smell a rodent, they, their brain goes into feeding mode. Like they click on like, I'm looking for food. Their brain is at that point is looking for a heat sense from your hand or from anything, honestly, into those heat pits on the very, very tip of the nose there. All those little heat pits are connecting the heat signature with the smell. And so if they smell a rodent they, and they're in, the, in that feeding mode and they see the heat signature of your hand comes in, they will automatically think that that heat signature is the smell and that they're biting a rodent. That's when you get a snake that's actually gonna bite and it's gonna hold on to your hand and it doesn't just wrap around your fingers or something. That's a much worse bite in the sense that they stay with you and you can unpeel them off or if you yank back, you might get a teeth broken off in you. And that's really when we teach people that when they have pets, separate themselves from the feeding process. Just place the rodent into the tub or use a long pair of tongs and your hands and, and your blood stays out of it. So thanks for watching that guys. It's actually a lot harder to get a snake just random snake to bite you than I thought it would be. You know, I get bit, I kind of just avoid it naturally through learning how to deal with these animals. I just avoid it constantly. I never really sat there and said, I want to get this snake to try to bite me. And it's a lot harder than I thought. It's, it's actually really, really cool to see how averse they are, how much they try to kind of avoid biting you, how much they just want you to walk away and leave them alone. Um, I want to talk about one more thing at the very end, and that is what to do as far as medically. It seems silly to even say that because of how little damage they do. But what to do medically if you get bit? For the most part, I just wash my hands with soap and water. You can put Neosporin on it or something, but really it's something talking about essentially the same amount of damage as a splinter or something like that. If you do get a feeding bite, they can sometimes be a little bit more, and you definitely, I would say, in that situation, put a Band-Aid and Neosporin on it. But that's about to the extent of it. I still have, in this hand right here, which is my hand that I feed with, I still have about four to five teeth in me in different spots in my fingers where I jerked away and a tooth broke off in me. I didn't even realize it and it healed up over it. And so every so often I'll grab onto something, I'll feel a little poke from inside there. And uh, eventually those will probably work their way out. But it's just part of having a large collection for sure. And if you have a pet, you'll watch my video about how to deal with them and realize it's, it's mostly in your own heart, your own psyche that makes you nervous about being bit. But the reality is not as bad as it's made out to be. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure to join us on Friday for another vlog, and thanks for watching.